Hello! Welcome to a new edition of Weaving with Landon. I've been meaning to make a video for quite some time on Baltic style weaving because I noticed on our channel the Baltic style video I did gets a lot of views. Um, as you can see here today, I am out in our camp in the woods. It's still a beautiful summer day. Uh, our dog has something to say <laughs> about me deciding to film in the woods. Um, but yeah, we got to take advantage of the nice weather when we have it. So Baltic style weaving is a kind of like a pickup weaving. I'm by no means an expert on this. It's newer to me. So I'm going to link some of the resources that I use to figure out this neat pattern of weaving. So Baltic style involves generally thinner background th threads and thicker pattern threads. I'll show you what I mean on a piece I started here. So the gray is my background thread and the copper color here is my pattern thread and we'll talk a little bit more about that once we look at what a pattern looks like. I'm doing this neat uh, hammer pattern right now. I will link to where I got that as well so that you can see it. Uh, this was be created by uh, one of the users on a Facebook weaving board that I go to. So to learn how to do this, I used uh, the, ink, the Inkle Pattern Directory by Ann Dixon. It's a great book. There's a ton of really neat different types of inkle weaving you can do that you can learn from this book. When I first read the directions on how to do Baltic, it didn't make any sense to me. So I turned to YouTube, like many of us do, and I learned how to warp and read the pattern from a video on YouTube, uh, which I will link to in the description of this video. Once I watched someone do it and then reread the directions in the book, it made total sense. Um, but just reading the directions, it doesn't, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, another thing that's a little different about Baltic weaving is you are warping two background threads for every one colored pattern thread. And the warping charts for this can get a little more complicated, but I'll give you an example of what they look like in, in Dixon's book. Uh, you can also have them written out a little more like a traditional ankle warped pattern so you have huddled and unhuddled but you're always going to have two background colored threads around each of your pattern thread hopefully that makes sense like i said i highly recommend checking out the video i'm going to link to because she goes through warping and she goes through how to weave so maybe that'll be helpful for you i already have my loom warped because I find what warping for Baltic takes a long time. There's a lot of threads involved and I wanted to do it on a rainy day when I was just sitting around on the couch and not try and do it out here in the woods. But when you look at your pattern, most of these patterns will have dots on them. I hope you can see it. So where there's a dot, it's a pattern thread. And those is what are what, there we go. Those dots indicate your, in my case, copper colored pattern thread. And those are the ones you're really working with. You're either picking them up between the gray threads or dropping them out of the pattern. And that's how you get the pattern. The other thing you'll always want to think about when doing Baltic style is uh, your weft will show. It's just the type of weave it is. So you're going to want it to be the same color as your background thread. Otherwise, it'll peek through, unless that's what you want to see. It's your pattern. Do what you want. Anyway, let me give you a little uh, show of how I do this, and uh, we'll go from there. I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. I'll try my best to answer them. All right, back in the GIF. All right, welcome back. We've got our weaving rig set up here. You can see a little better my pattern that I'm working on here. It's got this nice little border accent that I like a lot because it helps you keep track of the line you're on really well. Um, I'm really glad she added that little touch to the pattern. It also adds a nice little flair to what we're looking at. So, to start with, here's our pattern. 
I've got this neat little magnet board that a friend of mine bought. Uh, I think it's mostly used for cross stitching, but man, is it a game changer for something like this, especially if you're someone like me who loses my place easily. So I'm going to bring my little ruler down to my starting line. Now, obviously, this pattern repeats itself a series of times. I've marked out just the repeat section that I want to work with, but if you want to, go ahead, rock and roll with the whole thing. Uh, <clears throat> I don't sit still very well, so stopping and starting is a big part of how I work. So as you can see, we've got these dots here, right? And these every other spots. They correspond to, like I said, these copper threads here. So this pattern has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in one row. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the other row. And I'll show you. This is going to get a little tricky for me because I don't have as much working space. Usually I have my pattern set over here, but in the woods we don't have everything perfect, right? So be it. So... Whoa, sorry about that. Using my wooden bench. So, hopefully you can see the sun is delightful today. Um, there we go. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pattern threads on the top. So that tells me I am in the right starting room where I want to be. Uh, also, I know where I left off, so that helps. So we're going to pull our shuttle out here. So you can see I've got the silver thread on here. Get that out of my way. I do this by hand. I don't know if there's any other tools that would be useful for someone. When I'm doing basic pickup, I use a pick. Um... But there's a little more, the manipulation's a little different, so I find this just much easier to do by hand. So I'm going to balance my pattern, hopefully, on my leg here. Unfortunately, you can't see it, but... Uh, so my first row, I can see... I'm going to have to talk through this as I do it. I've never tried to explain it before. So... When the dot space is empty, it means I'm dropping that pattern thread. So all of these pattern threads are on the top right now. The space that the dot is in has no darker color, which means I don't want this thread showing. Whereas these ones, they do have a darker color, so I do want that thread on top, but then also this space in the middle has a darker color to it, which means I'm going to be pulling up a pattern thread from underneath to manipulate that one. So I take my border threads, get them out of the way. Oh, let me show you what I mean about. So this is normally what you have. You have a lighter colored thread, your pattern thread, surrounded by your two background threads. In traditional Baltic weaving, this pattern thread should be a thicker fiber than your background threads. Mine are all the same. This is working out for me, but in a more traditional Baltic style, you would have this pattern thread be thicker. I meant to warp it with a thicker thread, but I forgot. So, so be it. Such is life. I'm still going to use it. So, these are my pat my edges. Pull this one to the side. I'm always keeping my background threads on top. I'm never doing anything with those. So this pattern thread I'm going to drop. The next pattern thread I'm keeping. Now in between these two pattern threads, I'm going to reach down and pull out the one that's directly in between them. I keep the next one according to my pattern. The next one I see in my dot space that I see is empty, so I'm going to drop that one. Just drop it right to the background. Keep these two. Drop the next one right to the background. 
pull the next two pattern threads away. I'm going to keep this one. The next one is not a dot space, but it's filled in, so I need to pull that one from the background. Keep the next one. And drop the last one. And that's it. So I always advance my pattern after I finish the row before I pull the shuttle through. So I just did that on my board. Pull the warp up, your weft up from the bottom because you're moving to your next shed. Tighten her up. Oh, I know the shadows are kind of gnarly here. Working with natural light. I am not going to complain about the sunshine this late in the year. All right. So that's our first row. Now we've got the green on top. So you'll see in our pattern, the next row has that green on the edges. And then to figure out, make sure you're in the right spot. You can always count your dots, see how many pattern threads you have on top. I know I just swapped, so I'm good. So I'm in the next set. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep these first ones. When I come to my first pattern thread, I'm going to drop it. When I come to my next pattern thread, I'm keeping it. And then I'm pulling up one from underneath, dropping the next three, keeping this one, pulling one up from underneath, keeping this one, and then we're at the end of the row. So let's try that. Let's not lose my pattern. Drop this one. Keep this one. Pull the next one up from underneath. Drop the next three. Keep this one. Pull this one up from underneath. Keep the last one. Now keep your hands in there because you don't want those pattern threads that you just pulled up from the bottom to fall through. Pull your shuttle through. Switch your shed. That's how you start to get your pattern. And now we're back to that first shed. So I'm gonna stop talking, do a little weaving, uh, maybe I'll put some music over this for you. I don't know. We'll find out. But then you can watch the pattern emerge as I go through the, the repeat. All right, let's get going.
So with this section here, kind of from here to here, is what we just did. That tip to this point here. Ta da! So thanks for joining me on this edition of Weaving with Lannan. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll try my best to answer them. Or I'll point you to my favorite resource. I think sharing resources is always great. Everybody's brain looks works a little differently. And I know I always watch at least a few videos before I really feel like I know what I'm doing. Not that I ever really know what I'm doing. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Enjoy your fall. Thanks for joining me on Weaving with Landon. See you in the woods.